Hey everyone, today's mapping quick tip we're going to be talking about quickly making bulk changes to your map. So a quick tip for quickly mapping, a mapping quick quick tip. We're going to be covering the replace textures and entity report tool. The replace textures tool allows you to change all occurrences of one material in a map to a different one. To do so, make sure nothing is selected and click replace on the right hand side of hammer to open the replace textures tool window. On the left side of this window, under find, you can bring up all the materials used in your map with browse. Handy side note here, the small number in the bottom right corner of each material is how many times it is used in your map. You can filter these materials just as you would picking a texture out normally. Select the material you want to replace by double clicking on it. On the right side under replace, you can press browse to pick from any material you have installed to replace the previously selected one with. You have some controls under this that are pretty self-explanatory, but by default this tool will replace all instances of a material on the map. If you had something selected when you originally pressed replace, you will default to only changing the materials you have selected. Press OK and your materials will be replaced. Next we're going to show off the Entity Report tool. Go to Map, Entity Report. This brings up a list of every single entity you have in your map. This can be handy to sort through manually, but where it really shines is the filters. First, you can select from Everything, Brush Entities, or Point Entities to narrow things down a bit. And you can choose to include hidden objects or not. If you check by class, you can type in an entity name to filter for only those. You don't have to be super precise here, but just be sure to click off the text field to update your report. This is handy to find every instance of one type of entity in your map, but what if you want to find entities with specific fields among those? You can check key slash value to say, find a specific type of model of a prop static. These key values can be found by going to an entity and turning off smart edit. The property name is what you want to put in for the key on the left side and the value on the right. Again, you can be rather fuzzy with this. Now that we have things filtered, we can click on any of these entities listed in the report to select it in our map, or double click to jump our camera directly to it. You can even select multiples of these entities at once with shift or control, just like you'd select multiple files on Windows. So this is pretty useful if you're trying to find all of one type of entity, but where this really shines is trying to make bulk changes to your map. By combining this tool with the Replace Materials tool, you can quickly make mass drastic changes to your map. To showcase this a bit, I'm going to show a real example that I recently did to my map Stony Ridge event. We decided we want to get rid of all the snow in the map. At first, this sounded pretty tedious, since the map is designed from literally the ground up to be a snowy, winter-themed map. But I realized how easy it was going to be simply by using these two powerful tools. First, I wanted to change all the snowy materials. I opened up the Replace tool and filtered for snow. This brings up every material with the word snow in it. I went through each and replaced them with a non-snowy counterpart. Some of these materials listed were actually snowy overlay materials, which we wanted to just delete entirely. So we switched over to our handy entity report tool. I could find all these overlays by simply filtering for the value of snow. I can even get away with leaving the key value itself blank entirely. This brings up every overlay I wanted, and oh hey look, I almost forgot the blowing snow particle system in the map. I select the whole lot of them and hit delete. Looking around the map, it looks like we've just about cleared all the winter stuff from the map entirely. Except the two things I'm seeing left are a bunch of icicle props and sh like snowy shrubs all over the place. So we change our filter from snow to icicle. And hey, there's all the icicle props. If we need to be more precise here, we could always add in the key value and class filters, but luckily for this example, we can get away with being really vague. A quick delete and all the icicles are gone. To get all the shrubs, I filtered for foliage and replaced them with the dead shrub model. And finally, it looks like all that's left are the cliff rock props with snowy skins on them. We could go through the map and select them all one at a time and change your skins, or we could simply filter for cliff, select them all, and change your skins to zero in one big batch. And there we have it. As quick as that, our former snowy map is now a spooky wasteland. Hammer is an old tool, but with a few lesser known tricks up our sleeves, we can drastically reduce some of the tedious work involved in iterating our projects, and leave more time for the fun creative parts of mapping. Thanks for watching, and I hope these tips are of great use to you in the future.